In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit to be with you all. And with your spirit. Well, thank you, everybody, for joining us. It's a beautiful day. The sun is out here in Stockbridge at the National Shrine. It's Father's Day. God bless all of you fathers there and to all the fathers in your life, be they your biological or a spiritual father. We're offering up this mass uh, for them. Um, and especially, uh, speaking of fathers, for Father Richard Shabu in Nigeria, a priest friend of ours who is trying to help with some captives situations. Uh, so please keep them in prayer. That's what this Mass is offered for. Uh, but most of all, we celebrate it as the most holy body and blood of Christ. This is Corpus Christi. So the body and blood of Christ. This is the celebration, the solemnity, special celebration of the Mass. And so our reading today is the beginning of the Eucharist where Christ multiplies the bread. He already made the wine at Cana. He multiplies the bread and now we have the Eucharist, we have the Mass. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So thank you for joining us, and God bless you and all the fathers today. So brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, God and, and to, to you, you, my brothers and sisters, sisters that I, I have, have greatly great sinned sin. in my, my thoughts, thoughts and in my words, words, in what I have done, in what I have I failed, failed to do, to do. Through, through my fault, fault through, through my fault, fault through, through my, my most, most grievous, grievous fault. fault. Therefore, Therefore I, I ask, ask Blessed Mary, Mary ever Virgin, Virgin, all the angels and saints, and, saints, and you, you, my brothers and sisters, and sisters to, pray to pray for me to the Lord our God. God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
us pray. O oh God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion, grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that we may always experience in ourselves the fruit of your redemption, who live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Just one last thing. I know a lot of you know that on Corpus Christi there is a procession here with the Marian Fathers. We will not do the procession as part of this 9 o'clock Mass, a little difficult with the cameras. But if you're here in the area, join us after the 1030 Mass. Father Anthony will be leading us in a Corpus Christi procession <laughs> after Mass. And then finally, uh, there will be a special blessing. Uh, you have contributed or prayed or joined us in uniting in the uh, Father Day novenas that we've been doing of masses, and so today we will do a special blessing at the end of mass for all you fathers. God bless you. A reading from the book of Genesis. In those days, Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine, and being a priest of God most high, he blessed Abram with these words. Blessed be Abram by God most high, the creator of heaven and earth, and blessed be God most high, who delivered your foes into your hand. Then Abram gave him a tenth of everything. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also, the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lo, the angel's food is given to the pilgrim who has striven See the children's bread from heaven, which on dogs may not be spent. Truth, the ancient types fulfilling, Isaac bound, a victim willing, Paschal lamb, its lifeblood spilling, manna to the Father sent. Very bread, good shepherd, tend us. Jesus, of your love, befriend us. You refresh us, you defend us. Your eternal goodness send us in the land of life to see. You who all things can know, can and know, who on earth such food bestow, grant us with your saints, though lowest, where the heavenly feast you show. Fellow heirs and guests to be, amen, alleluia. be with you and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to luke glory to you o lord jesus spoke to the crowds about the kingdom of god and he healed those who needed to be cured as the day was drawing to a close the 12 approached him and said dismiss the crowd so that they can go to the surrounding villages and farms and find lodging and provisions, for we are in a deserted place here. They said to him, give them some food yourselves. They replied, five loaves and two fish are all we have, unless we ourselves go and buy food for all these people. Now the men were numbered about 5,000, then they said to his disciple then he said to his disciples have them sit in groups of about 50 so they they did so and made them all sit down then taking the five loaves and the two fish as looking up to heaven he said the blessing over them broke them and gave them to his disciples to set before the crowd they all ate and were satisfied And when the leftover fragments were picked up, they filled 12 wicker baskets. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So celebrating Corpus Christi, I think it's very fitting that it falls on Father's Day. What was the essence of what we've learned in Revelation about God? Now, remember, everybody always gets on the Catholic Church. I don't need man-made rules. Well, no, the Catholic Church starts with what's called dogma. Dogma is great, the greatest. This is revelation from God. 
direct revelation. And one of the main things is that God is Father. This is what Christ came to teach us. That was a concept foreign. A father loves you, takes care of you. That's what makes us different than all the other religions, especially Islam. It's, God is a disciplinarian, an ogre. Um, our revelation of God is Abba, Father, loving. This is what Father's Day is. And so we see, though, that it ties to what the Father gives us. What does the Father give us? He gives us the greatest gift. He gives us his own son to pay our debt that we owe for sin. Remember, the penalty for sin is death. You always hear me say, when I sin or you sin, somebody deserves to die. We deserve to die. Well, the father, Abba, the loving dad, sent a remedy for that. He sent his son so that he would die in our place, that he took our place so that we can have everlasting life. Now, how does that form of the son, since he lived 2,000 years ago, affect us today? Jesus said, I will be with you to the end of time. How is that possible when he ascended back to the father 40 days after he resurrected, back in the year 33 AD? How is it possible when he went back to the Father and assumed body and soul into heaven that he can still remain with us and we can be affected by this gift? The Eucharist. The Eucharist. This is so powerful. It's the whole basis of our faith. Now the basis of the Eucharist happens in the Mass. Now did you hear the words that was in that second reading? I mean, listen to the second reading. I mean, th this is from St. Paul. And he says, he says right here, the Lord Jesus on the night he was handed over took bread and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, this is my body. That is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. This is the mass. Oh, well, you Catholics aren't scriptural. The whole mass is scriptural. In fact, the entire mass there is more scripture in one weekday Catholic mass than any Sunday Protestant service, period. This entire mass, if you haven't seen our talk, Brother Mark and I do online, you can find it on our YouTube channel, where we walk you through every single word of the missal of the mass. It is all scriptural. And when that priest says and raises that, do this in remembrance of me. Oh, well, you Catholics are just reenacting it. No, the mass is not a reenactment. It's not a representation, or not a representation. It's a representation. We are there at Calvary. We are there in the upper room. We are there. Do you know what do this in memory of me means? In Greek, it's amnesis. That's a part of the mass. The Greek, the uh, Jewish understanding of that was to take something that is present, and Jesus was in the upper room, making his body and blood present to the existence of the world, and the Greek word in the scriptures is an anamnesis. That means to now make present for all eternity. It's not a, a memory in the way we think of it. It's not to remember something like, we remember the, the country's birthday on July 4th. And, and, and what, no, we, we, we're not remembering an event in the past. This event has made, been made present for all eternity. This is the mass. This is eternally going on before the Father. Jesus is eternally showing his wounds before the Father, now for all eternity. There is no time for God. There's no past for God. There's no present for God. That's why Jesus' wounds are eternally present before the Father. That is why Mary was conceived immaculately 48 years before the, the passion, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Well, how was she immaculately conceived? By the merits of the passion, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Well, it happened 48 years before. Yes, because it was made present to all time. This is do this in remembrance of me, amnesis. 
This is what we learn in seminary. This is what we Catholics don't understand about our faith. This is why we try to take you back every Saturday to seminary and every single day at this mass. You know, listen to these words. In the same way, also the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. What do I say right there at the altar? The new and eternal covenant. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the death of our Lord. What is our response? The memorial acclamation. What do we say? We say either save us, Savior of uh, Lord Jesus Christ, Savior of the world, or, or we say when we eat this bread and drink this cup, or we say this, this line right here. We proclaim your death until you come again. This is the mass. This is the beautiful gift of our faith. You know, it's, it's, it's so powerful that, you know, and, and St. Faustine is a great example here. I'm going to have Postulant Joseph read passage number 1804, where St. Faustine talks about Holy Communion. St. Faustina says, if the angels were capable of envy, if, they would only envy man for two reasons. I was always fascinated by this passage in the diary. One, that we can suffer. Angels can't suffer. They're spirit only. They don't have a body, soul, composite like we do. Why would they be envious that we can suffer? Because when we suffer, we share in the cross of Christ. So they envy us for that, believe it or not. So don't let your suffering be wasted. Offer it, unite it to the cross of Christ. It can save souls. Not that you do it, you unite it to the act of Christ on the cross that saved the souls. And next, the angel said, they would only be capable of envy because we can receive holy communion. They don't. The angels don't receive holy communion. So this is something they're actually envious of. And yet we walk up, we walk up the aisle, it's like, huh? Chewing gum, gloves on, receiving it in our hand with gloves on. I've had people grab it out of my host. Please don't grab the host out of the priest's hands. That's not how we receive. We receive, or better yet, on the tongue, kneeling before our Lord. This is the body and blood of Christ. And yet we don't understand this. This is why the mass is the perfect form of prayer. Well, I don't need the mass, Father. I do what scripture says. Go to your room, close the door and pray. Well, that's great. That's the start. You can't have this mass if you don't do that. Because prayer comes in two forms, public and private. Private, we have to have a prayer foundation in our life. Or this Sunday Mass isn't going to mean anything. So yes, you do have to go to your door, close it, and pray. But your, your prayer, like mine, is imperfect because of our sins. But now when we come to Mass, all of a sudden prayer is made perfect. Because it's a perfect sacrifice. This is the whole meaning of what Scott Hahn talks about. You know, um, I've told the story before when I was in North Carolina. Um, one of my first, we opened our doors right before 9-11, and it was tough. And I, I, I had my own business down there in, in uh, North Carolina, and there was a guy in Charlotte that I was talking to that was interested in possibly using our services, but he wanted to get to know me first. That's, that's, that's good. And so he was a real strong Christian, and somehow we got talking about the faith, but he was Pentecostal. And he said, I want you to come down to my, my church service on Wednesday night. So I went down there, and um, <clears throat> I wasn't really strong in my faith yet. I didn't really know fully the beauty of the Catholic faith. And he said, um, you know, he says, I want you to come to this church and everything. And I, I, I've told this story before, but I, I think it's, it's so interesting because this is what we Catholics sometimes get sucked into. I, got, I could have easily been persuaded away from my Catholic faith that night because I walked in the door 
and God bless you, all these people to greet us. We don't see that always in the Catholic Church. One of the times, one of the things people say about the Catholic Church is, I, I don't feel the energy, I don't feel the greeting. Well, but that's a manly sense. That's a human, you want to talk about human? People who say, I'm not about the Catholic Church because it's man-made stuff, well, that's judging man-made, whether or not there's somebody singing and dancing at the doorway when you walk in. Yeah, it's good to be felt welcome, but that's not the centerpiece of the worship. This is the centerpiece of worship. So I walked in and all these people come in and, and this guy, the business guy I was working with says, hey everybody, this is Chris and he's Catholic. And everybody rushed to me, started praying over me, trying to re relieve me from this Catholic heresy. And he says, Pastor Jim, come on over. And Pastor Jim comes over and he says, welcome Chris. He says, you're Catholic? I said, yep. He says, well, welcome. Here at our church, we don't have any of them, their rituals. We don't have the, the, I, the uh, uh, statues and the idol worship, and we don't have any of that. We don't have that altar and all that incense and all that swingy stuff. We just come. We just come. And at first, and a lot of Catholics get sucked into this, and a lot, at first I'm like, well, you know that, maybe they're right. Maybe he has a point here. Well, then I had my own mini version of Scott Hahn's story of the Lamb's Supper. If you haven't heard Scott Hahn's story of the Lamb's Supper, please look it up. I had my own little mini version of it well before I ever heard his story. And it's funny because this pastor basically was, was talking about the, the night. And, and, and you know what they were doing that night? They were studying the book of Revelation. Just, just like Scott Hahn's meaning of the Lamb's Supper. It was amazing. And so anyway, the, rap, the book of Revelation, they started talking about what? The Antichrist and the rapture. The book of Revelation is not about the rapture and the Antichrist. That's not what the book of Revelation is about. Basically, as Scott Hahn says, it's about the Mass. It's about the Eucharist. It says here, basically, that what, you know, in fact, do you know what the word apocalypse means? Okay, we call the book of Revelation the book of the apocalypse, right? Do you know what the word means, the Greek word? It means to unveil. That's what apocalypse means, not a bunch of earthquakes and, and fires. You know what apocalypse means? It means to unveil. What's the book of Revelation? We are unveiling the heavenly liturgy here on earth. Isn't there some video that was floating out a few years ago, the veil removed or something like that about the mass? So the church is basically heaven here on earth. And this is what Scott Hahn talked about. Now, Scott Hahn, I'm going to borrow from him right now because I think this is an incredible summary. Scott Hahn says you want to see the Eucharist in the, in the liturgy, not only John 6, turn to the book of Revelation. Do you know what's in the book of Revelation? The priesthood. Chapter 20, verse 6, celibacy of the priests. Oh, you Catholics, how dare you make the man-made rule that priests can't marry? Well, open up the book of Revelation. Celibacy, chapter 14, verse 4 is in there. What about the high priest and the robes and the candles? Oh, that's all Catholic invention. No, turn to Revelation, chapter 1, verse 13. What about the altar? What about that censer, the swingy thing that that pastor talked about? And the incense rising up like the prayers of the saints before the throne of God. Turn to Revelation chapter 8, verse 3 and 4. What about the Eucharist, the manna, the bread from heaven? Turn to Revelation chapter 2, verse 17. What about our mass where we sing and shout? Oh, ma oh you can't pray, it's repetitive. Oh, for repetitive prayer, we can't do repetitive prayer, we Catholics? Well, turn to the book of Revelation. Holy, holy, holy. They don't say just holy, they repeat it. Holy, 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 Revelation 4, 8. What about the alleluia that we just sang as we came forward? That's Revelation chapter 19, verse Verse one. What about the Gloria that Brother Ken just beautifully sang right now? Oh yeah, that's right. That's Revelation 15, verse three. 
What about the penitential rite where we just began this mass, where we asked God to give us repentance, where we repented before God? That's in the book of Revelation. What about saying the Lamb of God that we're going to be singing here three times? That's 28 times in the book of Revelation. What about the altars? What about the books? What about the chalices? That is all in the book of Revelation. What about the white robes that the priest wears? What about the saints? What about the sacrifice of the Lamb to the Father, where the sacrifice lamb had to be eaten like the Holy Communion. That's in the book of Revelation. You get the point? That's the point. This is the point that Scott Hahn makes. The, the, the fact that the Mass is on every page of the book of Revelation. All of these. The Mass is heaven on earth. Christ is present in heaven and on earth in the Mass. You make it to Mass, Scott Hahn says, you make it to heaven. So as I'm sitting there listening to this, I'm confused. As that night that we're at the Pentecostal church and they're reading the book of Revelation, I'm like, that doesn't sound like the Antichrist or the rapture. And then later when I heard Scott Hans talk on Lamb's Supper, it's like it all made sense. Christ gives himself even to us as a bride in Holy Communion. Again, Revelation 19.9. And then finally I want to finish because... The whole book of Revelation is divided just like the masses, Scott Hahn teaches us. Do you know in chapters 1 through 11, this is incredible to me. In the, verse, or the chapters of the book of Revelation, 1 through 11, you know what happens? The high priest emerges at the altar, goes to the book to reveal its contents. What does that sound like? That's the liturgy of the word of the Catholic Mass. Then in chapters 13 through 22, guess what happens? The people are fed the manna. The wine is placed into chalices. Chalices are filled with wine, and guess what happens? Take one guess. It's turned into blood. Where have you seen that? The Catholic Mass. This is like the second part of the Mass, the liturgy of the Eucharist. This is everything. And so this is, I want to finish, because when I did my talks on the Chaplet of Divine Mercy, it brings us all together. What are the two forms of the Mass I just said? Liturgy of the Word, chapters 1 through 11 of the book of Revelation. Priest comes to the book, reveals its content. What is the liturgy of the Word? It's a meditation on scripture. Scripture, the life of Jesus, the life of Mary. What is the rosary? The rosary is not a bunch of Hail Marys. The rosary is a meditation on scripture, the life of Jesus and Mary. So if you miss mass, and it's a Sunday, what's the next best thing? Go to confession. But if you miss weekday mass, do the rosary. It's like liturgy of the word. It's a meditation on scripture. And what's the second part of the mass? chapters 13 through 22 in the book of Revelation, it's the liturgy of the Eucharist. The wine is turned into blood and people are fed the bread, the body and blood of the Lamb. So what's the next best thing if you can't make daily Mass? Pray the chaplet of divine mercy. Why? Because the chaplet of divine mercy is that Eucharistic sacrifice. Why? Because the priest makes the sacrifice. And what is the prayer of the chaplet? The prayer of the chaplet is, Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. What's happening there? Well, just in the Mass, what's happening? The priest is offering the body and blood, Eternal Father. Who is the prayers of the Mass addressed to? The Father. So, Eternal Father. It's basically what I'm saying. When I elevate that host, I'm basically saying, Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and the sins of the whole world. This is basically what I'm doing when I lift that host. Well, Father, I'm not a priest. Only you can do that. Actually, by virtue of your baptism, you are a priest. When you were baptized, you were joined to the three offices of Christ, priest, priest, prophet and king. You are a prophet. A prophet teaches. You are to teach 
the ways of the Lord. You are a king. A king governs. You are to govern your family and your loved ones in the ways of the Lord. But you're also a priest. And what does a priest do? A priest offers sacrifice. Joseph just read it in the first reading of Melchizedek. Who's Melchizedek? Jesus comes from the line of Melchizedek. Melchizedek offered the first sacrifice of bread and wine. This is amazing. And so when we come and when you share in that prayer, you're exercising your priesthood. Eternal Father, I offer you. Well, who are you? I can't offer God. Yes, you can. You're a priest, not a ministerial priest. Can't hear confessions or celebrate mass, but you participate in it. And you share in the common priesthood of Christ that offers that sacrifice to the Father. That's why we can pray, Eternal Father, I offer you the body, blood, soul, and divinity of your dearly beloved Son because you are exercising your priesthood. So if you make it to Mass, the best. You can't make it to Mass, pray a rosary. It's like Liturgy of the Word, Revelation chapters 1 through 11. You pray the chaplet. It's like the Liturgy of the Eucharist, Revelation 13 through 22. Oh my, how could you ask for anything more? And for all of the Catholics who say, I don't go to Mass because I don't get anything out of it. The Mass isn't about your entertainment. The Mass is about what you put into it. And what you put into it is your whole heart, body, and soul. And if you do that, you can't get anything more out of it. Because what you get out of it is eternal life. And that is the gift all of this is the gift of our Father. This truly is Father's Day because we get the gift from our Abba Father and it comes in the form of the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ. Whew. This is our faith. God bless you. <clears throat> Let us stand now and offer our petitions to our Heavenly Father who is rich in compassion and mercy. Hmm? Oh, sorry. That's a great correction from our seminarian. Let us stand now and profess our faith. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he suffered under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom, kingdom will have, have no, no end. end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us now offer our petitions to our Heavenly Father. For the church throughout the world, may the Lord strengthen faithful communities united in love of God and neighbor. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. prayer. For civic leaders, May the Holy Spirit guide them in embracing sound and moral principles and solving the issues before them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are sick or in need, may the love of Christ comfort them and give them hope in the promise of eternal life. 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. prayer. For this Eucharistic assembly, may the Lord help us grow in faith and love, bearing fruit in the manner of our lives and the abundance of our service. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. For our beloved dead, that seeing the face of God, they may live in everlasting joy with God in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. For all the members of the Association of the Marian Helpers and the Confraternity of the Immaculate Conception, both living and deceased, and for all the intentions they have entrusted to us, as well as all who call or write to us, may the Lord favorably hear their prayers and strengthen them in faith, hope, and love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. And for our fathers who have given us life and love, especially my father, I hope, who is watching this day. May God bless him much and all of our fathers. That we may show them respect and love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for fathers who have lost a child through death, that their faith may give them hope and their family and friends support and console them, we pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we place our petitions before you, and through the hands of our Lord Jesus Christ, we come before you asking for the gift of life eternal. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We'll now take up a collection to help the daily expenses of the shrine. Please be generous in giving. Know that your generosity is greatly appreciated. Thank you. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Lord, accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant your church, O Lord, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in mystery in the offerings we here present through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the true and eternal priest who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim, commanding us to make this offering as his memorial as we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us We are made strong. And as we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim.
we also offer and unite this sacrifice for the protection of those captive priests and that nun in Nigeria and the protection of Father Richard Shabu. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts that we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. My Jesus mercy. My Jesus mercy. My The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. <clears throat> Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Faustina, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. 
Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather together all of your children to yourself who are scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed, hallowed be, thy be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come. come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory is now. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ to keep me safe.
an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things and desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Paragraph 1,804 in the Diary of St. Faustina. The most solemn moment of my life is the moment when I receive Holy Communion. I long for each Holy Communion, and for every Holy Communion I give thanks to the Most Holy Trinity. If the angels were capable of envy, they would envy us for two things. One is receiving, is the receiving of Holy Communion, and the other is suffering. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray that we may, be, we may delight for all eternity in that share in your divine life which is foreshadowed in the present age by the, our reception of your precious body and blood who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Well, God bless everybody. Thank you for joining us. We continue to, to invite you to join us daily at 3 and 5 for our chapel and rosary, 9 o'clock for our masses. Uh, there will not be an explaining the talk, a faith talk live this Saturday, but we will be playing online uh, a replay of a past talk that's never been broadcast before. So we hope that you'll join us for explaining the faith this coming Saturday. And, and we invite you to join our EWTN show, Living Divine Mercy, every Wednesday at 6. Uh, coming up, some great episodes on Sacred Heart and other things. Also, too, uh, you may have been part as being a Marian helper in our Novena of Masses that we just finished. Uh, this Novena of Masses for fathers, whoever your father is, spiritual or biological, uh, we're now completely Leading that, a beautiful gift of grace for them and for you. So we'd like to finish this blessing with this blessing of all fathers. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. God our Father, in your wisdom and love you made all things. Bless these men that they may be strengthened as Christian fathers. Let the example of their faith and love shine forth. Grant that we, their sons and daughters, may honor them always with a spirit of profound respect. We, we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. And I'd also like to add one last thing. I missed one of the intentions during the prayers of the faithful, and that is for fathers who have died, that God may bring them into the joy of the kingdom, and we pray for that, and especially all those that we have lost, and a special prayers for my father today, uh, for all of those who are fathers, fathers biologically or spiritual. God bless you, and have a very great day. Well, I already gave the blessing, so now we finish with the St. Michael prayer. St. Michael, Michael, the, the archangel. archangel.
Defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. May the divine assistance remain always with us. May the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. God bless you. Members of his mystic body, now we know I thought we were going to go and visit my dad's grave today. I know. It's the anniversary of his passing, and I can't remember the last time we went there. I know, and I know you loved him very much, but he's not here anymore. I don't think he'd be upset if you don't go visit his grave this one time. For a soul in purgatory, family or loved ones, are of no importance if they cannot be expected to help them. And the only way to help, and the ultimate proof of love or friendship, which the soul desires and awaits more than anything, is prayer.